Welcome to our online service today. Uh, once again, we are not having in-person services. We are back online for at least a couple more weeks, uh, this week and next. And uh, so we're thankful for you that are joining us today by way of Facebook or those that will be watching it later on our YouTube channel or whatever. We're thankful for that. Also, uh, we're recording this service and it will be uh, up uh, in its uh, really format tomorrow that's a little better quality. Uh, but uh, for those of you who like the live version, uh, here we are. Now, this is our Christmas and July service. We uh, also had the uh, Christmas in July for uh, planned for a while, and uh, we didn't realize that it was going to be a service where we didn't have people, but we decided to go ahead with the service. Sandy will talk more about it in just a little bit to explain it. Uh, but this is a time when we want to reach out and give to those in need. And so that's what this service is about. So today, we're going to be singing some Christmas songs. Most of these are familiar. So feel free to sing along with us. Let's pray. Father, today we want to pray your blessings on our service today. And for everyone who tunes in and listens to this service, we want to pray, God, today for those that may not know you or haven't. Uh, come to know you in a personal way, God, that they could do that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. Let's sing uh, Joy to the World, number 246 in the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Good morning, everybody. I know we just have a couple in here, but hopefully we have several out there. So today was our Christmas in July, and it started out as a great idea of talking about our missions in the middle of the summer. And uh, of course, maybe it'll be a way to get us a little cooler today. I don't know, just thinking about it. So today we want to talk about the missions that we have here at Salem and some of the wonderful programs that we continue to help throughout the year. And um, of course, our focus today is the mission is our is our disaster relief. Um, we have used this particular program throughout the years, building handicap porches for those in need, money for people who needed medical travel, um, you know, for fires and floods in our community. So we want to mention that today. And so um, we we were hoping to be able to do, uh, you know, to have. Uh, you know, the missions to bring in monies for the disaster relief. So if you want to do that, just simply add that as, a, as an added note on your check when you put it in the offering. Um, some of the other missions that we do, just sort of let everybody know, and in the church, sort of the, because it's good to know where your tithing and offerings are going around the world. Um, of course, we do Kentucky Methodist Children's Homes and uh, the West Care Shelter, and something we want to mention on that today is um, they have a sincere need right now for water, toilet paper, and trash bags. So if you want to bring those to the church, you're welcome to do that. You can take them downstairs, and somebody will be coming by and getting those, you know, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. We're going to do this for a month, so uh, just bring them here to the church, and we'll make sure they get there. We also to continue to support, uh, on a monthly basis, the Helping Hands, a wonderful organization, uh, Gideon's, um, UMCOR, this uh, last program that we supported was a water program in Africa, and I think we, we did $775 for that, so it, it was uh, pretty significant. Of course, Mountain Mission Truck uh, for the United Methodist Church, um, it's a wonderful organization in Jackson, and we continue to support them. Mountain Mission Schools, we, uh, they've been struggling with some issues. They had, I think it was 17 children that had been affected by the COVID-19, so um, we were able to send some money to help support in that. Of course, continue, we always uh, support the Wesley Village through every year, the Senior Living Center, um, and our scholarship program. We always like to support uh, those children who are seeking and working towards their educational programs. So um, we like to make sure we recognize them. So that's a program that we do. And our backpack program that we work with the local schools. Um, I think we have 12 or 15. Do you remember, Johnny? I can't remember. Anyway, we have 12 or 15 backpacks that we have been uh, sponsoring. And so we want to make sure that we continue to do that. And the Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center. Um, so these are just a few. It sounds, I mean, you think about it, it's, it's actually a lot. And so your offerings and your tithing, um, you know, goes to that. And, and it's important that we share that with you, our church, so that you can know that the money that you are putting in is going out to help those in need. So 
That's it. So uh, as we be praying about those ministries and feel free to bring those items to the church and those items again was water, toilet paper trash and trash bags. Uh, and we'll be taking those over to the shelter. So we want to thank you in advance for that. Uh, also to remind you, uh, since we're not having in-person services, you can bring your offering by, uh, talk to Paul or uh, any time uh, that you'd like. You can mail them. Uh, feel free to send us a note if you want our address for that. Uh, that, that would be perfectly fine. For our uh, prayers today, uh, since we don't have people here to request, we're going to do it uh, what's called prayers of the people. And I'm going to invite you to join me in these prayers. So for those of you that are here and uh, for those of you that are listening, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, I'll mention s some specific things uh, like our community. And when I say, uh, you know, here our, uh, uh, I'll require uh, Lord in your mercy, you will say, hear our prayer. So when there, let's practice that. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, everyone will say, hear our prayer. Okay? Uh, and so this way, we'll have a moment of silence between each one for you to pray either silently or out loud uh, for these specific requests. So together, let us pray today. Lord, today we want to pray for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We want to pray for those who suffer and those who are in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we pray for the concerns of this local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, local and universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in communion with the saints today, join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us uh, also remember our offering, and, and let's pray for our offering today before we sing our, our doxology. And again, uh, this is a little different, uh, since you're not here to drop it in the offering plate, uh, but uh, we want to continue to thank you and pray for our offering. Let's pray. Father, today we pray you bless the offering that is going to be received, and we thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of your people and God what it uh, means and, and where we know that it uh, requires financial assistance Lord to, to keep a church going and for the many ministries that we support we thank you for that we pray you bless it in Jesus name Amen at this time let's sing our doxology God from whom all blessings 
blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And so, uh, our children's moment today, uh, we're going to be uh, kind of adding that as an introduction to our sermon. Uh, and uh, so, also, um, we want to pray for uh, those in our church that uh, have prayer requests that, we, you know, we may not be able to, sh to share or know about today. And also... Um, special singing. Sandy Waters was going to sing, and uh, maybe uh, she can do that uh, next time. We'll, we'll talk to her about that. Then uh, we're going to get ready, ready for our scripture reading today. Uh, as we get ready for that, I want you to join me in uh, singing Jesus Loves Me. And so uh, all the kids out there, hopefully you know this. You might know the first verse uh, at least, uh, but it's on page 191 of, of the white hymnal. But uh, let's sing a little bit of Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Would you come and read the scriptures today? Our text is Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 39. Go ahead. And uh, we're going to go through some wonderful truths today. There's so many in what I'm getting ready to read. Of course, Romans 8:38 is my all-time favorite. So it's Romans 8:22 through 39. If you'd like to follow along in your Bible. So not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even when we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings when cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And I have a heart behind, beside that one. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined these, he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall, sh who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, 
or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughters. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. All right. Thank you for the reading of the word. And uh, that uh, the song, Jesus Loves Me, I think probably sums up what this passage is really trying to say. So if you don't understand what he's talking about when he's talking about predestination and all that, just remember Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. That's a good way to, to know that. So uh, trying to break down this passage, it's, it's a, we've been in Romans for several weeks and this is one of those more debatable, controversial passages. In fact, uh, this subject has been debated by theologians for thousands of years, and we still haven't really settled the matter. And when you ask different people of different denominations, you'll get different answers. And I've studied it from both perspectives. I've studied it from a, uh, from a Calvinist, a Baptist uh, perspective uh, in college. Bible College, and I've studied it from a Wesleyan perspective in seminary, and you know I kind of know what I th what I think about it, but at the same time, I don't think we can fully understand it. I think it's one of those paradoxes where we realize that God knows all things, uh, but yet we have a free will. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. So. Uh, just know this, there's a few things I want to make mention of here today with, about this passage. First of all, understand that we are known and planned. Let's just start right there. We are known and it's planned. Um, the word predestination, election can, as I said, elicit all kinds of responses and discussion. And Wesley and Calvin were very close on everything. They agreed on most everything till it come to th this idea here of free will. And Wesley was very, very strong about the fact that he believed that we have a free will. Um, and I think uh, the word itself has caused some confusion. And when you really study it out, uh, as I said, there's good people on both sides. Uh, our, our Calvinist friends would say, well, that means uh, predestination means that God in eternity past chose people out of, other, out, of, out of all the people that would ever be born. He chose a number, those would be the elect, that would go to heaven. And by virtue of choosing some, uh, the others are not chosen, so they will not go to heaven. Now, some people call that double predestination, or you could just sim simply say it's like choosing a basketball team. Uh, when you choose 10 people and there's 15 there, uh, by choosing 10, the five are excluded. So some people say that's how God chose you and I, that he looked down through the eternities of time and based upon his own choice, nothing that we did, that he made a choice that he would choose that those would be certain people that would be elected and some that would not. That would be a Calvinistic uh, way of, of looking at things. But uh, I, I think uh, for our part, I, you know, understanding, I think Wesley, I think maybe Wesley got it right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little partial to Wesley, being a, a Wesleyan myself. But uh, understanding, you know, first of all, we don't understand it completely. And we never will probably in this life. But trying to break it down, understanding Wesley's doctrine or thought on provenient grace. Provenient grace really to me explains this uh, a little better in the sense that God knew and God planned. 
God knew and God planned. Uh, and think of it like this, if it's very hard to understand. Think of it like the parents of a child. When, when a, two people are getting ready to have a child, you know, these days we even know what the baby is going to be and, and all of that. They begin, even before the baby is born, to plan for this child. They begin, they even name the child. They will pick out, uh, you know, rooms, uh, colors for the room. They'll paint the room. They'll get the baby bed ready. And they are planning. They know this child is coming. And they're planning for this child. And so they spend time together as they're trying to anticipate the coming. And even after the child comes, they still help plan for the future. Now they may say, they may have plans that say, I, I want this child to go to UK. And, and the child may grow up and go to uh, University of Louisville. That may be disappointing to them. They had a plan, but the child has a free will at the same time. And sometimes that happens with us. God has a plan for our life. God has decided that He wants us to have a relationship with Him. And He has uh, got everything prepared and ready for us. But at the same time, we have a free will. And we can choose to go one way or the other. And God, uh, you know, if you think about the idea of prevenient grace, though, Provenient grace says that God's grace goes before us and woos us and, and works in our lives to bring us to Him even before we come to salvation and understanding of that. And so God knew. God knew we were coming. God prepared for us and He planned for that. So understand that we are known and planned. Now, you can make more out of that than you want to. You can take it further than you want to. But just know that we're known. And we're playing. And just like the parents would plan and anticipate the arrival of their child, what an exciting time that would be. God has planned and anticipated our arrival, not only in birth, but in coming to Him and being in heaven. That's a wonderful thing. So we're known and playing. Number two, uh, understand that we are called and we are claimed. We're called and acclaimed. So he says, those whom he called, he also uh, justified. And the idea there that, that God has called, and, and this call goes out. And, and again, you can get bogged down with the details of that. And I'm not going to do that this morning, but to say that, that there is this call that goes out to all. Whosoever will, let them come. And uh, when you come... God claims you for His own. If you come, you, you know that God has, uh, you are one of the elect because you have been, uh, ex you, you accepted God and He accepted you. Just this past week, I was uh, called to the hospital. Uh, actually, on my time off, I went over there. And uh, there was a, a person, I'm not going to say if it was a man or a woman, but this individual said to me, that they uh, realized that they had uh, cancer that was uh, incurable. They only had so long to live, according to this, the doctors, what they don't really know, but what they're estimating. And he wanted to make things right with God, this person. And so when they did that, they said, you know, I, I, I feel like I need to make my peace with God. I, I feel like maybe God is ashamed of me. And I began to talk about how God was just longing and waiting for this moment. That, that God wanted to, to uh, save her or him. And God wanted a relationship with this person. And what a wonderful thing to be able to share that God was waiting for them, planning for them, that he was calling them. And I was able to baptize this person right there in the room. What a, a wonderful thing. God calls us to Him. Um, years ago, several years ago, there was a study done at John Hopkins University where the professor had the students go out into the community and wanted them to, based upon the studies of the community and what they, they found there, to determine or make a prediction how that the children would turn out later in life. 
And so these university students went out and did a study in the slums of New York, I think it was. And they think it, understanding that these kids were being brought up in poverty and, and all of the crime that was around them predicted that uh, probably 90% or more of them would end up in jail. Well, some years later, the same professor had his new students go out and do a study on these same kids that they had predicted that would in, end up in jail. And what they found was, as they found, tracked down these people, that only four of them had ever been to jail out of like 100 people or more, only four. And here's what they discovered. As they talked to them, they found out that each one of these ones, each one of the people that they, they were wrong about, had a teacher by the name of Sheila O'Rourke. And this particular teacher had been such an influence in their lives that it changed, really, their destiny. They found this teacher, Mrs. O'Rourke, in a nursing home. And they asked her, what was the secret? What, what did you do that caused such a change and have a success in the lives of these young people? She was bumfuzzled, and she's like, all I did was love every one of them. What a difference love can make if we could just learn that lesson. I've been preaching that for a long time, but if we, could, we can get more people by love than we can by hate every time. And, you know, Jesus showed that to us. All He did was love us. And that love compels us and draws us to Him. When He died upon the cross, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us that we might become righteous. What love was displayed on Calvary. What a wonderful thing. So we're called and claimed. And number three, I want to say that we are held and strengthened. We are held and strengthened. Uh, he says in that verse, as we want to turn there, look at that again, in Romans chapter 8. He says in chapter 8, As we've been looking at this, we think about, uh, we started out a few weeks ago and talked about there's there now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So we don't have to fear. And he talks about not having fear of bondage, again to bondage, but we cry, Abba, Father, we're children of God, and if we're children, we're heirs. And now he begins by talking about, you know, that uh, even though we may suffer, it's not anything compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us later. And he says uh, that we know that all things work together, in verse 28, for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. All things, uh, probably uh, one, if you have a version that says all things work together uh, in our good or for our good, there's different versions, but the idea really is that God is working in all things. I think that's the idea there. That in all things, God is working to bring good out of it. Not that all things are good are going to happen to you, but that in all things, God, are, God is in the business of working it out to make things good for us, to those who are called to, according to His purpose. And then He says, he, those who foreknew, He pressed, predestined. Uh, and those He predestined, He called. And those He called, He justified. And whom He justified, He also glorified. And the idea there that, that we, got, in God's mind, we, we've already, it's already a done deal. God is planning it, even our glorification. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. So there's no condemnation. He's continuing that idea. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he lists a whole bunch of things. And he says, no, 
in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. And he mentions at the end there that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. More than conquerors. We're held and we're strengthened by God. There was a story in Christian uh, parenting today about a lady who was talking to her little girl one night, her little girl Eva, before she went to bed, and, and was talking about uh, a friend of hers had a daughter whose name was Amy, whose hair was falling out. And she, asked, she said, let's pray for Amy because her hair keeps falling out. And so Eva began to pray for Amy uh, pretty much every night. God, please hold on to Amy's the hair on her head. And every night she'd pray that prayer. Finally, they found the problem and realized that Amy had a condition, a very rare condition, that was incurable and that the hair would continue to fall out. And so finally when the mother told uh, Eva this, she, she prayed this. She said, Lord, if you're not going to hold the hair on Amy's head, will you hold Amy? We just hold Amy. And I'm so glad today that even when our hair is falling out and our lives may be seemingly falling apart, God holds us. God con continues. And it's a wonderful thing. As I was uh, do performing this baptism and pouring the water over the head of this person in the hospital, it was just a wonderful thing to feel the presence of God in this place. And God's presence is so wonderful. And sometimes I just want to be held. Sometimes I just want God to wrap me in His arms and hold me in His loving arms. So know today that you're, you are known and you're planned, that you're called and you're claimed, and that you're held and you're strengthened by God's loving arms today. That's the main thing that I, I want you to see in this passage today. God loves you, and He wants a relationship with you, and He's planning for that. And so when we come to God, uh, just like this person who was baptized, understand, God's not standing there like the prodigal son's father. He, he's not standing there just saying, what are you doing coming to me? You're dirty. You stink. You, you've done all kinds of bad things. That's what we think. That's what the prodigal thought. But instead, God is wringing His hands, walking out on His front porch, looking over the hills to see when His child is going to return. He's waiting for you. He's planning for your arrival. So why don't you come to Him today? As your musicians come today, we get ready to sing. I want to invite you to pray right where you are. We call it the sinner's prayer. We call it the Jesus prayer. But you can say it in your own words, but it's something simple as this. Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. If you pray that prayer and you mean it from your heart, God has promised He would not turn you away. And I invite you to do that today as we sing. Let's now sing number 239, Silent Night, Holy Night. We'll sing verses 1 and 2, and then we'll do our business.
Christ into our community. I just want to uh, say today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. birthday to Parker and my son Aaron today. May the Lord bless you. 